Hey, you summoned a lesser maker. My entire Mordheim journey has been documented on this channel. I have no nostalgia for things of the past. And I'm gonna kind of grab some context in this episode. So uh, we're gonna follow a build guide from a White Dwarf magazine. This is uh, an article that was submitted by Stefan Rambart and it's a witch's wagon. And I would like to invite you to build with me. There are uh, certain files and things that you can grab on Patreon for free. I'm gonna start off with a concept sketch. This is mostly to define size. I went by two inch wide, three and a half inches long from the base and the wheels are 40 millimeters diameter, but you don't have to use wheels. If you do, these are free templates. This entire build, I was resisting the urge to just put like spider legs. Um, a lot of people in the Discord were suggesting they build it on slugs and stuff. So there are a lot of different options if you don't feel like using wheels. I laser cut these guys out and I glued them together with super glue. Now to kind of make the basic shape, I went with some exaggerated shapes and uh, used my sketch as a guideline. I hot glued those shapes together and as I was gluing it, I put in the base and just made sure everything was basically in the right area. I was going for kind of a uh, really fantasy looking carriage. I think that's kind of obvious, but when you take a, something that's like really almost Disney-esque and give it a really dark looking paint job. I think the contrast between the exaggerated shapes and the dark tone kind of make for like the best combo. Um, so that's kind of why I did it this way. You can see that exaggerated roof line. That's something I really like in my builds. When cutting out the roof shapes, you want to kind of cut into like an hourglass shape. The hourglass will allow you to kind of get that inside radius. It'll that hourglass shape, the the more you want it to curve up, the thinner you want that waist. I'm plugging in some windows. These are from my building accessories STL pack, and I've been developing it for about a month and a half. It was a lot of work and I've learned a lot and it it's really cool in my opinion. Um, it'll be available in a couple of weeks. If you want it early, it's it'll be available for a $5 donation or if you want to become a Patreon member for two bucks a month. Um, I really appreciate it. This door is from the STL pack as well and it was a lot of fun to do. The siding on the magazine article was vertical. I thought it would be more realistic if it was horizontal. That way the rain could kind of run off of it a little easier. And um, it was only a little more work. Honestly, it, was, it went pretty fast. Uh, I just kind of cut around windows and it, it was pretty simple. So I'm using cereal board here. Just regular Elmer's glue, nothing special. I tried to use watered down PVA, but it was just too thin. The siding makes a lot of detail where there might be a blank space. And that was really awesome because I didn't have to put uh, a ton of details over everything. Uh, the article had like little bits everywhere. And to be honest, I thought it was a little too busy and I was a little worried that mine would look too simple. But by the end of it, because I hand sculpted some things later, um, the siding added enough variation and texture for you to look at that I think it turned out looking great. So I kind of want to do this to a building and see how it looks. Uh, for this side, I tried to make sure that the slats weren't all straight. The previous side, everything was straight, and that that's good, but I wanted to kind of add some variation on the side, so whenever I cut something at the wrong angle, I didn't straighten it out after 
I just kind of laid it in at whatever angle it was. And that allowed me to give enough variation to make it interesting. I'm going to use some green stuff to do the uh, front and back facade, mostly because I want to get more experience with sculpting. I've never really sculpted a terrain piece or architecture before, and that's something I'm really familiar with. So it'll allow me to kind of get some practice in with something that I think I'm pretty good at. It, it definitely worked. I definitely have more confidence with this material. It allowed me to kind of experiment and make sure that things are going out and doing the thing that I want it to do. I, When I go into miniature scale, I'll definitely be able to experiment and succeed a little more because I know what and how to get textures uh, correct with this material. Hey, real quick, my channel is small and growing. So if you could like and comment, that would make a huge difference on how this video performs. I really appreciate it. If you really like the video, subscribe. All my stuff on Patreon is absolutely free. I'm working on STL packs, and if you'd like them before anyone else, you can become a Patreon member for two bucks a month. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, now I'm plugging in some bits into the green stuff. The green stuff is a really good adhesive as well. Uh, as a sculpting material. So the first bit is a sickle from the squig hoppers kit. Um, the second bit is a plague bearer skull. This last bit is from the arm of the warrior priest from the city of Sigmar kit. Now I got to make a driver. I backed the trench crusade um, Kickstarter and Unfortunately, there were some delays on that Kickstarter, and he released some STLs. So I was able to print one of those guys out. This is the Ammo Monk, I think his name is. And I modified him to kind of casually sit at the front of this uh, wagon. And I thought it was really cool. I really love his nonchalant pose. And it was something I was really happy with. While my wife and I were watching a movie, I finished off with the rest of the green stuff. And I felt like it was ready to put on the rest of the wheels. I put on the wheels now before the rest of the detailing on the sides. Because I felt like uh, the negative space needed to be filled. And if I had put plate things um, overlapping the wheels, it would have really messed things up. Uh, I did some shingles. I used scalloped scissors, and then I cut in between, uh, separating each scallop. And it does a really good job of making shingles really fast. I have a laser cutter, but doing it this way is just so much faster. So I recommend getting some scallop scissors. Um, because there's really no way of replacing that option. And now I'm going to paint it. Everything is going to get a brown base coat because everything's basically wood. So it's just going to get brown all over. I also go over everything with just a slightly lighter brown just to kind of give it a subtle highlight. And once it dries, it's a little darker, and I go in with another highlight after that. I use dollar store craft paints for stuff like this, um, especially the base coats. The thing that's kind of bad about these paints is they dry at different. They dry way different than they go on wet. And that's just something you kind of have to get used to. I went in with some green to kind of go over some, like maybe replaced panels. Um, I also go over a shingle, and for each shingle, I put on streaks of red. Um, that way it looked like it was being painted over some wood grain, and the raised wood grain shingle uh, on, the, on the shingle got more red paint than the lower grain. Uh, yeah, I'm just basically giving it a wood grain 
texture, but with a paint that isn't a wood grain color. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, yeah, and I just did that on all of these. Um, it took a while, but it was a detail that really was worth it. Um, and I did that on the door as well. My mom always likes to paint doors um, on the front of the house or whatever. And so I kind of do that occasionally um, because I think it's fun. Um, and I really like green and I can't get it out of every any project. So um, to paint this guy, I kind of imagine him as me, honestly. He's the lesser maker. And <laughs> I just painted his cloak green because what other color would it be? <laughs> um, yeah. And I painted the uh, plague bearer and the other skulls. Um, and that was basically it. I highlighted some other things that I felt like needed to be highlighted. And it slowly became my favorite project that I've ever done. I'm going to thank my Patreon members real quick. Leroy, Moonbad, Fetter, Caracol, Old School FRP, Burning Heart Custom Creations, James and Anders. I really appreciate your guys' support. And these guys got the STL pack early and they got it throughout the uh, development process. If you would like that, it's only two bucks a month. Um, you can get the STL pack for a $5 donation as well if you'd rather do a one-time thing. Um, and it'll be free for anyone else uh, just in a couple weeks. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a good one.